change is inevitable. Then why is it so hard? Do you have what it takes to survive and thrive in changes? What is really required to stay brilliant? What is getting you this far might not get you any further. To scale and grow, organizations have established structures in form of hierarchies, processes and systems as a safety net around the employees to deliver the quantity and the quality of the services promised to citizens and customers. For the employees to fit in as a cogwheel into the big machinery. But this might actually hinder the, f the future growth. Because the world is so much faster today than what it used to be. But it's still so much slower than what is yet to come. Welcome to the new world, the VUCA. V as in volatile. The nature and the speed of changes. You for uncertainty. The lack of predictability and the sudden surprise moments. C for complex. For the multitude of uh, factors to consider. And the non-linear non cause and effects. And A for ambiguous, for the blurred vision and the increased confusion. Many new companies are disrupting the market fast from different directions, challenging the status quo. And you might already have experience that to calibrate the big machinery that, that your organization has become is becoming tougher and tougher. I've been working with uh, change management in mergers, <laughs> transformations and reorganization for 15 years. And I just can tell you, it ain't working anymore. So I've spent the last couple of years to really uh, explore what shift needs to be done. And change, the reason for change, often comes to us from the outside. But the motivation to change really comes from within. What we tend to know and care about, we tend to defend. But what defines what we care and know about? It may come from your upbringing and values. My life didn't start too well. Both my parents were alcoholics. I was taken from them into an orphanage and kidnapped back. Put in an orphanage again and again and again and again. By the age of three, I had been moved 30 times. The turning point came one night when the neighbors had complained. The picket police stormed into our apartment. They find me quietly crumbling in the couch among stuffing and fighting. A three-year-old succeeded in silence. The police took me with them to another orphanage. Still an environment of distrust. I lost my faith in myself. I didn't trust my biological parents or the society or the police. I mean, I was scared of the police. They took me away. It would take another half a year before I came to a new family. But it would take another two years before I opened my mouth and started talking again. And that was thanks to the love and the safety within my new family. My new parents had a, had a clear purpose, to help abandoned children and give them a new chance in life. My mom, she's 72, and she's been taking care of abandoned children for 48 years and keep doing it. Up to date, 57 children have gotten a new upbringing through our home. And her motto is quite simple. She said to us from a very young age, Mia, you always make a choice. And even if you don't make a choice, that is also a choice. Some may think it's mean to say so to a child, but it's the other way around. That is love, that is trust. To really believe in another human being so it gets its faith back in itself. To be seen, heard and recognized. It learned me how to think about how I think. To make sure that I didn't fall back on pitting my bad childhood. But rather make the best of the future ahead of me. And do you know what it gave me? Resilience. Self-leadership to really grow and take responsibility for my development. It also made me allergic to blame, spiking my blameometer up to red in certain situations, because now I can see through confusion to identify the problems and see the solutions. 
And I didn't realize until I grew up what a gift it was to have this resilience from a childhood. To not only bounce back to what I was, but to really bounce forward. And this is reflected in so many organizations as well. Sometimes we feel stuck in an environment of control and distrust, either at home or at work. And the biochemical cortisol, then as a response to the stress felt, shuts down parts of the brain connected to risk-taking, creativity and big picture thinking. So it really limits our access to information. It makes us less effective in an environment where we don't feel trust and feel stressed. And if we look at the mental health records, they're really showing a depressing curve at the moment. So I'm really a living proof of how an individual can be affected by its environment, an environment of distrust or trust. Because then we also at, at work have those organizations, the environments filled of trust and love, where we grow as human beings, we get to be seen, heard, recognized, and we grow beyond our potential. Don't take it personally if you fail. That is what my manager told me just before I left for one year long assignment in Australia. Some think it's mean, but I might be weird because I actually took it as a compliment. That someone believed in me to go and do some tremendous work, although the circumstances were not too good. And it, it was a struggle, but it went well, and I grew so much. Maybe you've had those moments as well. Maybe you have believed in someone beyond the potential. Maybe your children, maybe your employees, or maybe someone did it for you. Maybe someone believed in you beyond your potential. Maybe your parents, or maybe a former manager. And that is exactly the leadership we need today to be able to fail forward, to learn while doing, to not only bounce back, but to really bounce forward. Because of course we need control in many areas, but it sneaks in too easily into areas where it really hinders the growth. Because to control is to not fully trust. Because in an environment of trust, we involve more and then we can include diverse minds. Because if we not consciously include, we are unconsciously excluding, excluding other minds, other experiences, other, other beliefs. And do, can you really afford to not include diverse minds? Because what is really innovation it is to take two different thoughts and combine them into something new. And that's exactly what you need at the moment. You need diverse minds that understand your customers' pains and gains. Inclusion brings innovation as competitive advantage. Organization resilience is the ability of an organization to anticipate and adapt to the incremental changes and sudden disruption in order to survive and thrive. Organizational resilience is to not only bounce back, but to really bounce forward. Take the hinders and make them a springboard. The individual resilience has come to be quite acknowledged, but not yet emphasized enough. However, the resilience on, on an organization level is still quite ignored. And in order to get to the resilience on an organization level, you have to start with building it in the employees. Because what could happen if we really help to build more resilience? What would happen in the families, at workplace, in the world? Because emotions really spread faster than colds at work. And we are each other's work environment. Would you like to be a colleague with yourself? Seriously, <laughs> every day? <laughs> the personal is the organizational. We have to start with the employees. We have to make them be seen, heard and recognized for the value contribution. Let them be a part of the solution. 
help them to feel safe in change. Make change joyful and involving instead of fearful and pushing down. And in order to get resilience, you also have to change your way of thinking. I have a bike. When I look at my bike, the environment looks the same. The roads are the same. The fit my fitness level or lack of fitness level is the same. So I don't really see a need to replace my bike. It's fine as it is. But when I look at my smartphone, I look at it. I like it as it is, but I still want to upgrade it because the environment is changing so much. The development changes so much. Because what would happen if I didn't upgrade it for a couple of years? It would be like being stuck with a black and white TV with one channel. Would that hamper my performance? You bet. So in order to stay up to date, I want to be upgraded. So I'm, I'm happy with it as it is, but I'm also happy with getting rid of it to get the new one. To remove the unused functions, enhance the existing ones and add new ones. So how are you looking at your organization leadership? Like the bike, no need to change, or stay upgraded. Change is normal. That is one way to change. Another way to change is also, I work with the digital transformation in a hospital. And it shows the shift in mindset that is needed. A medical doctor, when they are seeing the patients, they want to make sure that they give the best answer. Get it right the first time. You want them as a patient, you also want them to be right. You don't want them to try out things on you or you or your family. No, you want them to be right. You want them to take the best research solution up to date and give to you. And they have their whole pride in this, in giving the right answer. But this cautious mindset of being cautious until you're right is really hindering the fast development. Because the same doctor also needs to shift hat and get in to the fail forward mindset. Because there's so, so much development going on within technology that could save lives in amazing ways. But we have to try it out, we have to experiment, we have to do prototypes, we have to understand. So the same doctor needs to be go from doing it right to fail forward during the same day. And it has to happen on, on each employee level, employee, manager, partner. It has to start with the individual to become a fast organization. So how do you look at your changes? Are you looking at them as the bike, replace, or as the mobiles, upgrade, constant upgrade? So make change safe. Make sure that change is normal and help the employees to be a part of the changes. Because you already have the structures in place to deliver today what you promised yesterday. But do you have the resilience in place to also develop today what must be delivered tomorrow? Change is inevitable, but it doesn't have to be hard. Let change be a part of the normal. Build the resilience within the employees. Because where change is second nature, change is safe. Thank you.